Hello everyone, how are you doing today? You are all welcome to my channel, Apostle Paul Taiwo YouTube channel, to my recent subscribers I want to say a very big thank you, and to those that have been here all along, God bless you. And if this is your first time on this channel, I want to say a very big welcome and thank you for tuning into my video today. Kindly endeavor to click the subscription button and also the notification icon so that you can be notified whenever I dropped a new video or come up for prayers. This video you are about to listen to I believe will bless your heart, and help you to come into repentance, and also strengthen your bond with God and with His Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Endeavor to like this video, share it to all your friends, contacts and loved ones, God bless you. My first divine encounter with Jesus Christ. In November 2012, I became seriously ill, and my parents took me to a hospital. The doctor said that my blood was very low and that I had TB tuberculosis. Learning this was very hard for my parents as they couldn't afford the cost to have me treated, so they took me back to my home. While I was on my bed resting, I started to feel strange and my whole body became weak. I found myself outside my body in a pure white room. Jesus appeared to me, his face was shining and handsome, but I noticed he was not happy. He took my hand and took me out of the room to stand before a great throne. Shining Glory of Jesus I saw God on the throne, but I could not see his face. His body was like a burning fire, full of power and glory. I saw groups of angels in white garments before the throne, and they were full of glory. Those angels carried books in their hands. I saw uncountable people before the throne. Revelation 20:11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And they went one after the other to receive their judgment, and when each one would get before the throne, the angels would open the books in their hands and God would judge that person. Many people stood to hear God tell them depart from me. God would judge them with great anger and his voice sound like the greatest of thunders. Ezekiel 43 8 In their setting of their threshold by my thresholds, and their post by my posts, and the wall between me and them, they have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed, wherefore I have consumed them in mine anger. Whenever God would say depart from me, a great storm carried that person away. Matthew 25 41 Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. All the people before this throne were afraid to stand before God. The angels never called out anyone's name, each person knew when it came to his or her turn to receive their judgment. 2 Corinthians 5:10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Anyone that worketh iniquity was carried away by the storm into everlasting punishment. Matthew 25 46 And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. As long as you are alive, you still have a golden grace to repent from your sin and forsake your evil deeds. The anger of God is like a burning fire. Zephaniah 2, 1 to 3 Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness, it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. And this world is a valley of decision. Joel 3 14 Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Let your decision be Christ, surrender your life to Jesus Christ and escape the wrath of God. No matter what sins you have committed, Jesus will still forgive all of them. Hosea 14 4 I will heal their backsliding, I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. Habakkuk 2 13 Behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity? Jesus takes me to hellfire. Then Jesus took me away from that place and to hellfire. On our way to hell, we passed through a tunnel. When we got out of this tunnel we immediately arrived at a place of pure darkness. It was a place of great darkness with terrifying sounds of crying and horror. I asked, where are we, Lord? 
And he said, This is the kingdom of Satan, Hellfire. Hellfire is a fearsome place of a thick darkness. I saw many demons, they were huge and ugly. These demons were working hard and with speed and without rest. 1 Peter 5 8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The Lord told me, they are planning how to bring man to this place. Hellfire is like a sea, and everybody has his or her own portion within different departments. There are many people in hellfire asking for a second chance, but restitution is not possible. Micah 3 4 Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them, he will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. The first department that the Lord showed me was a place where pastors who lost heaven were been tormented. I saw many pastors in hell. On their pits, there is something like a signboard, it contains the name of that pastor, the name of the church that pastor attended, plus the reason why that pastor is in hell. Each pastor had a demon tormenting them. They cried out for mercy, but Jesus wept and said when I warned you, you refused to listen to me and now you are in this place. I know you not. Proverb 1 31 Because I have called, and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, but ye have said it not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity, I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer, they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, for that, they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. The Lord said to me, Hell has enlarged herself and none that come here shall return again. Proverb 2 19 None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. Isaiah 5 14 Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth, shall descend into it. I saw such a great and surprising thing. My people, how can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Hebrew 2-3 Rev. Oshafa in Hellfire I saw a man in Hellfire, the demons were tormenting him with their weapons and devices. The man was begging for mercy and he cried bitterly. I asked the Lord, who is this man? The Lord told me, he is Reverend Oshafa, the founder of Celestial Church of Christ, the White Garment Church. The Lord told me the mystery of this man, he made a covenant with Satan to seduce the people with a doctrine of darkness, healing with candles, perfumes, and soaps. He would tell them to use these and to go bathe in the river, thus deceiving them with the power of a devil. The Lord added, he introduced false doctrines just to be known as a powerful man of God. Ephesians 4:14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive the lord said i warned him but he refused he said to the man i know you not jesus was weeping like a baby this man denied the cross of christ just because of fame now he is in hell begging for mercy with the Lord denying him due to iniquity being found within him. 2 Timothy 2:12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him, if we deny him, he also will deny us. 2 Timothy 2:19. Nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And, let every one that now met the name of Christ depart from iniquity. I want you to understand that no matter what don't be living in a way or teaching others things that you cannot defend for yourself before God. Titus 1:16 They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable, and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Jeremiah 23:24 Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth? Saith the Lord. Many people are in hellfire because of their doctrine. Philippians 2 5 Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Judas Iscariot in hellfire. I saw another man in hellfire, the demons made him lay upon a metal-like table. They hurt him with many types of devices. 
I saw a very big iron which the demon operated to pass through the stomach of the man. It went through his belly. The man cried bitterly. Then suddenly, a demon appeared having a very big metal knife in his hand. He cut off the middle of the head of the man, then the demon gathered many maggots and scorpions, he stuffed them inside the man's head and covered it back. The man cried more like the wind of the sea. It pained me greatly to see this. The Lord told me, he is one of my disciples, Judas Iscariot. I then asked the demon the reason they are tormenting him in such a way, and the demon told me if he did not reveal that man of light Jesus to the people to be killed, the work of salvation will not come into manifestation. They shouted loudly, why did you betray him? They continued to torment him. Matthew 10 4 Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Matthew 20 18 Behold, we go up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. You must be careful of what you are doing, do not betray Christ. Woe unto that man, by whom the Lord is betrayed. Matthew 26 24 The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Those who have learned from the Lord and have an understanding of the Word of God must allow the Word of Christ to dwell in you. Colossians 3 16-17 Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. To him who draws back, the Lord says my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Hebrew 10:38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. If you are a servant of God, examine yourself. Take away the stumbling block from your life, hellfire is horribly real. King Ahab and Jezebel in hellfire. The Lord then showed me a man who was sitting chained onto an iron seat. The seat was very hot and reddish like a coal. Though he screamed in great agony the demons continued tormenting him with spears and with a great fury. This man began to beg Jesus for a chance to get out of the fire. I wondered who the man could be, the Lord knew my thoughts and told me, he is King Ahab. Immediately, I saw a woman, the demons were tormenting her. They beat her with spears as she cried and shouted. The Lord told me, she is Jezebel, the false prophetess who seduced the people to sin against God. Revelation 2:20 Notwithstanding I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. You must be careful because there are many false prophets and prophetesses who teach the people false doctrines, who only set up riches for themselves. They call themselves saviors and deceive people with the deceptions of the devil. If they refuse to repent, they shall have their part in hell fire. 2 Thessalonians 1 8 In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. A six-year-old boy in hell. I saw a little boy in hellfire, the demons were tormenting the boy with spears. When the boy saw us, he cried for help to take him out of the fire, but the Lord said, I am not the God of the disobedient. This boy was very rude while he was on earth, he would always disturb his parents during the time of the pastor's messages. Whenever his parents corrected him, he would shout at them. He became sick and died, now he is in hell forever. The Lord says, No disobedient child will inherit the kingdom of God. Ephesians 6 1-2 Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Most Reverend Patrick R. Cooney in Hellfire, Worship of Mary. The Lord then showed me another man in hell fire, he was known as Reverend Patrick Cooney on earth. The demons were cutting his body with saws as if it were a tree. The man was crying but the demons continued tormenting him, and that way of torment was very great. They would mock him and laugh at him as the only spot where he was found at fault was due to his doctrine. He was here because he frequently would bow before a Saint Mary image. Exodus 23-4 Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, 
or that is in the water under the earth. This is so sad, many people end up in eternal hellfire due to this kind of act. Jesus wept with great compassion for the soul of man. I was also in a great sorrow when the Lord said to me, If you are truly sorrowful, you will tell them what you saw. You must open your heart and say no to the deception of the devil. We must come out from any doctrine that will make Christ have to deny us. 2 Corinthians 6 14-18 Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Stop it, do not bow before Saint Mary any more. The department of those WHO hooked themselves together with the prostitute. I saw many people in this department, the Lord showed me their earthly pictures. They were all beautiful and handsome on earth, but now they are very ugly here in hell. The demons tormented them and used spears to beat and pin their private parts. They cry and seek for death but death cannot be found. Revelation 9 6 And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. O oh, Jesus wept, the people begged the Lord to take them out, they swear with their lives to do his will if they could come out of the fire, but the Lord never plays or jokes with the word that has gone out of his mouth. Colossians 3 5 to 6 Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. It is declared in his word that anyone who practices immorality cannot inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6 9-10 Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Those WHO fashion themselves in manners of dressing. Those who dress to please the flesh, the women that put on trousers, earrings, chains, woven articles and attachments, makeup, and all other worldly dress, they were in the department of prostitutes in hellfire. Isaiah 3 16-24 Moreover the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet, therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their calls, and their round tires like the moon, the chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers, the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tablets, and the earrings, the rings, and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples, and the crisping pins, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods, and the veils. And it shall come to pass, that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle a rent, and instead of well-set hair baldness, and instead of a stomach or a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. All of them were tormented. James 5 3 Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. The department of those who heard about Christ but refused to repent. There are many people in hellfire who have heard about the work of salvation but refused to repent from their sin. They thought they can come into heaven with works of flesh and blood, but instead, end up in the fire of hell that burneth for eternity. 1 Corinthians 15:50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. They were crying but the Lord said, they were given much grace while they were on earth to repent from their sin, but said, tomorrow and procrastinated. Some even said there is no hell fire. 
Some beat my servants that I sent to them, and now they are in hell begging for a second chance. I know them not. Proverb 1 24-28 Because I have called, and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, but ye have set at not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity, I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer, they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. The Lord said, I show them the way to escape hellfire, but they hate me and my way and choose a life of enjoying this world. I even offer them grace when they were about to die but they were distracted. The Lord also said, they hated me, and loved death. Not only earthly death but also everlasting punishment in hellfire. Proverb 8 35-36 For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul, all they that hate me love death. Repent from your sin for there is no repentance in hellfire. Those who refuse to repent will be cast away into everlasting punishment. Revelation 21 8 But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The Department of the Backslidden Christians There was a great torment for those who turned away from the Lord, the demon cut their tongue, cut their body and beat them with sharp weapons. They cried bitterly, they started blaming themselves saying, Oh, why did I turn back? He warned me but I hearkened not. And the demon told them to shut up, he gave you grace but you made it useless. You will never get out, we shall torment you till the judgment is set. And they continued tormenting them. Ezekiel 18:24. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned, in his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. The demon will tell them, You are mine forever. Please do not go back to the world, all you who are Christians, for there is a great danger in turning away from the Lord. 2 Peter 2 20-22 For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein, and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, than, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. My own pit in hellfire. Then the Lord showed me my own pit in hellfire. I was very sorrowful, but the Lord said, everyone on earth has their own pit in hellfire, and the mission of the demon is to bring you into it. You must make sure you do not go to that pit because it is very hot, burning with fire like acid. And we left the place. The throne of devil toppled by name of Jesus. Then the Lord took me to the throne of the devil. I saw a very big, tall, fat, huge demon on this throne. He was very hideous and he immediately set his eyes on me. He called my name, Senayan. You have come here to see our mystery. I will not allow you to share any of our secrets. I will kill you, I swear. And the Lord told me, Fear not, for I am your life. Isaiah 41 10-11 Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded, they shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Then after some time, we were invisible to the devil, and the Lord told me that all things are not visible to the devil, he does not know everything. But all things are visible to God. I at first did not believe this because we all know that the devil is powerful. The Lord knew my thoughts and he took me to the back of the throne. I noticed the devil did not know that we were there. Then the Lord told me, call my name and I quietly said, Jesus. And a great power shook hell and the devil fell down from his throne. Then the devil turned back and we appeared visible. Then the devil shouted my name, Senayan and the Lord told me, try the power in my name. 
I commanded the devil to die for three minutes in the name of Jesus. The power in the name of Jesus nailed his spirit on something like a wall and his hideous body fell down. Philippians 2 9-11 Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And after three minutes, the Lord released his spirit and the devil came back into that hideous body. Immediately when he rose up, he shouted with a great fury and wrath. Then I saw many demons approaching, they were rushing out and they all assembled with arrows in their hands. They all came against us at once, then heaven opened and I saw a pure white arrow. Just that one arrow came down and it destroyed all the arrows of demons. I want to tell you, there is power in the name of Jesus, by his name, every knee shall bow. Philippians 2 9-11 Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Mark 16 17-19 And these signs shall follow them that believe, in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. John 14:14 14, 14, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 16:23 And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. There is power in the name of Jesus, call it out with faith and the demons will flee from you. But when you call the name of Jesus without repentance you are in danger. The Fallen Angels in Bondage The Lord took me to a big hall in hell, I saw all the demons chained down and on seats. The Lord told me they were the fallen angels, so I asked the reason why they were chained down. The Lord told me, they are very powerful and if they were released, they would cast more souls into hell, they are very powerful. Then the Lord told me, they will be released after the rapture to trouble the earth and persecute the people for the mark of the beast. 2 Peter 2 4 For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. One of them called my name, and said, Senayan, the Lord has shown you a good testimony, but if I meet you on earth, I will kill you. When we left the place and on our way, I noticed that something was holding on to my clothes. When I looked back, I saw it was a demon, and he came out from underneath. Because of the light of Christ, it could not come near me. Then the Lord told me, He is the high priest of the devil Beelzebub. Matthew 12 24 But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub the prince of the devils. The demon said to me, We will not allow you to share the testimony and you will not reveal our secret, we will kill you. Then the Lord told me command him. So I commanded him in the name of Jesus to fall down. Just then a great wind beat him down and he returned to his place. The Lord also showed me the spirit of stubbornness and how it sent evil weapons but the Lord sent it back many folds more and it ran away. Psalm 91 1 He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. As long as the Lord held my hand, his presence cast away my fear, and there was not a sorrow about what I saw. My aunt. I saw a lady afar off in hellfire, the demons were tormenting her. Nawum 2.10 She is empty, and void, and waste, and the heart melteth, and the knees smite together, and much pain is in all loins, and the faces of them all gather blackness. She cried as she was looking at me, and I asked the Lord, Who is she? The Lord told me, It is Ruth, your auntie. She was the firstborn of our family. She had died many years ago, what a great sorrow, she was there because she did not know the Lord. I was not happy and I was thinking if I too would not make it to heaven. The Lord knew my thoughts and told me, I am your life. I want him to promise me that I will not end up in hell, and he said. If you know my name. He always tells me fear not, for I am your life. The Church 
The church needs to wake up and put on the armor of God. I saw a group of demons, they gathered, then I saw a very big book before them. They began to open it, and immediately they opened to a page and said, Yes, we are to face the church, then they closed the book. Suddenly, an uncountable number of demons appeared with arrows in their hands to launch strikes against the church. I was surprised, then the Lord told me, These are the arrows of slumber and weakness, they are used so that my people may not pray, fast and do exploit for my kingdom. All the demons have one mission, their mission is to bring people to hell. The church needs to wake up, we should pray against unseen forces that plan against the church. Ephesians 5:14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Demon Woman I saw a powerful demon, he disguised himself into what looked like a beautiful lady that looks decent and like a good Christian. He entered a certain church to attack a brother that recently surrendered his life to Jesus Christ. He came in just to seduce that brother to lose his salvation. Joel 1:14 Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God, and cry unto the Lord. Let us call a solemn assembly and cry unto the Lord to awaken the church because they which are fallen asleep in Christ have perished. 1 Corinthians 15 18 Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. The church needs a divine revival, let us build up our prayer life that we should destroy every seed that the Lord did not plant into the church. 2 Corinthians 10 4-5 For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. There are many demons in the church today operating in the likeness of men. They want to seduce the church. 2 Corinthians 10 13-15 But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you, for we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope, when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. For us to overcome them, we must put on the armor of God. Ephesians 6 10-18 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Remember these are perilous times. 2 Timothy 3 1-7 This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, trucebreakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses, and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The Christian that defends the devil. The Lord taught me a lesson, saying, many Christians are defenders of the devil. I thought within myself, how can a Christian that prays against the devil defend the devil? The Lord told me, there are some things in the scripture that I condemn. The devil knows everything I condemn and he is operating on that. Some Christians will tell their brother and sister it is not a sin when it is a sin. The devil will make sure he finds a way to prove sin is not sin. 
As long as the Christian also says it is not a sin when it is sin, they make themselves defenders of the devil. 1 Peter 3 3 Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel. Jesus says, I warn you about worldly dressing, but some will say, that is not what God means, it is our faith. Some even say putting on earrings is not a sin. My son, I did not only mention earrings but putting or wearing of gold or silver. Those who do dress to please the flesh. James 5 3 Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty that depends on jewelry, or beautiful clothes, or hair arrangements. We have two kinds of beauty, our outward appearance, and our inward appearance. And let it not be that outward adorning of painting the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on apparel, 1 Peter 3 3. The Lord says, If any Christian says it is not a sin they are the defenders of the devil and he that defends the devil will never get to my kingdom. The Lord also says, My son, read what I declare in the book of Deuteronomy 22 5, I warn the people to obey me, because whenever a woman puts on a man's clothes or a man puts on a woman's clothes, they are cursing the God of heaven and earth, saying that he is not perfect in his work. Deuteronomy 22 5 The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. The Lord was crying and said, My son, man curses his creator, and yet I am still giving them the grace to repent. But if any of my servants refuse to repent, and if they continue defending the devil, I will spew them out of my mouth. Revelation 3 15-16 I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou work cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. The Target of the Devil The Lord told me that the target of the devil is the prayer life of a man. Once your prayer life is captured, then your decision for God will be captured. The person will also fall victim when the fasting life of the man is captured. You must master and guide your prayer life. When a person's prayers are affecting the kingdom of darkness, the devil will try to find ways to quench the power so its fire might weaken and die. 1 Peter 5 8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The Lord told me, Look at the man that the demons torment with anger. The Lord told me, when he was on earth there was always confusion in the kingdom of darkness when this man prayed, and I loved it. His prayers would thwart and destroy the devil's plans. The devil and his agents began to target the prayer life of this man. They captured the man through the bitterness in the heart over one brother in the church. The Lord said, I warned him, but he refused to listen to me. The man had an accident and he died and now he is in hellfire. Matthew 5 44 But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you. There are many choir ministers that have bitterness in their heart against brothers in Christ. This is often because one is more talented than the other in one thing or another. People develop envy and pride because of this. They which do such things are in danger of hell, Matthew 18 4 Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Plan of God The Lord told me, the plan of God is great for the man. Whenever God has a plan for a man's life, the plan of the devil is to destroy the promise and plan of God. I asked Jesus, can the devil destroy the promise and the plan of God for a man? The Lord said, yes, and the Lord explained to me, in every plan and promise of God for a man, there is always a condition, and in that condition, there is grace and mercy. The grace is for a chance for restitution if the person breaks any of the conditions, mercy is for the person to be forgiven by God. The devil will make sure you break the conditions. When God made a covenant with Abraham, the condition God gave him was to walk before me and be thou perfect. Genesis 17 1-7 And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram, and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. 
And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. God has a plan for your life and the conditions are written in the scriptures. Galatians 5 19-21 Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Not only that, but God himself will tell you more. Do not lose the grace and the condition of God and his mercy will raise you up. Psalm 91 11-12 For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. The wife of Pastor W. F. Kumui in the kingdom of God. Then we left hellfire and the Lord took me to heaven. I saw a lady in heaven, very beautiful, she came out from a very big house she was the only one who owned this house. She came to me with a smiling face, she thought that I was arriving in heaven. I wondered who she could be as the glory of God had changed her earthly beauty. The Lord told me, she is the wife of Pastor W.F. Kamuyi, my servant. I was so happy because she was full of the glory of God. Heaven is so beautiful, the entire place was full of the glory of God. The Lord showed me the river of blood, it was very cool and it looked like a swimming pool. Whenever we sin against God and ask Jesus to wash us, then he will wash us in the river of the blood. Then the Lord showed me the trumpet that will be used for the rapture. He told me, my coming is very near. The trumpet was so shining and it was made with wonderful gold. He also showed me preparations for the rapture. The Lord took me to a very big hall and I saw many saints in pure white garments, they were singing, praising God, shouting unto the Lord, the glory of God was in their midst. Heaven is very beautiful, it was shining everywhere because all the light there was the glory of God. A very big house of a woman in heaven. The Lord showed me a very beautiful and big house in heaven, I wondered who could be the owner of this house. The Lord told me it belongs to a woman, her name is Margaret. She is winning many souls to my kingdom. The soul she wins can never be numbered by man, only by God himself. Her works have built her this house. Matthew 10 7 And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. She surrendered her life to me, the things of the world were nothing to her, now she ends up in my glorious kingdom. Any Christian that refuses to win souls to my kingdom can never enter my glory. Matthew 28 19-20 Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Matthew 10 32 Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. The Road of Hell Fire the Lord showed me the road of hell, there are many people on that road. Some look like Christians but they were going on the road leading to hell. Some held hands, a husband holds the hand of the wife, a wife holds the hand of the husband. Parents hold the hands of their children, and some were going on their own there was a very big load on the back of each person. The more Jesus looked at them, the more he was crying like a baby. I saw something that puzzled me, I saw groups of people, they were women, and they tried their best to pass through the way to heaven, but a power was pushing them back. Then the Lord told me, the unclean thing shall not pass through my way. Isaiah 35 8-9 And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness, the unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, 
nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon, it shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. I asked, what is the unclean thing in them? And the Lord told me, it was their dressing, they put on earrings, weave on, attachments, chains, jewels. They put on man's clothes, they attempt to beautify themselves. They want to pass through my way. That cannot be possible. To obey is better than sacrifice. Then he continued crying. Isaiah 3 16 to 24 Moreover the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet, therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their calls, and their round tires like the moon, the chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers, the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tablets, and the earrings, the rings, and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples, and the crisping pins, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods, and the veils. And it shall come to pass, that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle a rent, and instead of well-set hair baldness, and instead of a stomach or a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. 1 Peter 3 3 Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel. Deuteronomy 22 5 The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. The Lord wept bitterly and he cried aloud like a woman in labor, those of you who think you can just do as you like after you gave your life to Jesus, you are just deceiving yourself. Do not listen to the deception of the devil, when you are born again, old things have passed away. 2 Corinthians 5:17. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. The Road of Heaven The Lord then showed me the road to heaven. I saw people but they are not as many as on the hell road. On that road, I saw that some were moving forward, some were moving with joy, and some were dancing, praising God. 2 Corinthians 13, 9 For we are glad, when we are weak, and ye are strong, and this also we wish, even your perfection. 2 Corinthians 12 9 And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I then notice that there are little and not too high hills on that road, and whenever anybody gets there, they will climb up it then get down to continue on their journey. I noticed some people had already crossed the hill but were coming back to the road, they were tired of moving forward. If you are that kind of Christian, you are tired of temptation, afflictions, poverty and many other things. You think the best solution is to quit serving the Lord. So you stop that and go back because you feel you are just a man that escaped from a tiger and had fallen into the pit of a lion. The Lord still wants you, but you must persevere. Acts 14 22, we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Return to Christ and he will save you. Remember the torment of the backsliders in hellfire. Jeremiah 3 21 to 22 a voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. I saw some were standing, they are not moving, they are just standing there. If you are Christian and you are thinking of whether to continue serving the Lord or not, you have to stop the evil thoughts, and then move forward. The best choice is to continue moving, so pray for strength. Ephesians 6 18 Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I then saw that some were crawling, they wished to continue on the way, but they were tired. If you are the kind of Christian that you fear your parents more than you fear the things of Christ, you have to stop it. This is very dangerous and some of you think that your parents are persecuting you, making you sin against God. You have to pray and say no to any decision that is against the will of God, the Lord says, fear not. Matthew 10:28 And fear not them which kill the body, 
but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Pray for strength to stand up and begin to move forward because our God is powerful. Cry unto him, and he will listen to your request. Ephesians 6 14-18 Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Jeremiah 33 3 Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Jesus wept bitterly and I too was sorrowful. The Lord told me, what happened to you that you are sorrowful? If you truly are sorrowful, then tell the people what you saw. I then woke up with fear. The End Repentance It is time to repent from any sin. No matter what sin you might have committed, God is just and faithful to forgive you your sin. Romans 10 9-10 That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Jesus loves your soul and he does not want your soul to go to hellfire. Habakkuk 2.13 Behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity? God has sent his only Son, Jesus Christ to die for your sin. Whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life, John 3.16. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, and no man cometh to the Father except by Jesus, John 14 6. Repent now and be saved. Acts 17 30-31 In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because he hath appointed a day, in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. If you are ready to give your life to Christ, pray the following prayer. Lord Jesus, I know myself as a sinner, I know I am in darkness, but now I'm ready to do what you want me to do. Please forgive me all my sin, wash me in the river of your blood. Heal me, strengthen me, empower me, give me power over the flesh and let your kingdom come into my heart. Write my name into the book of life and let there be joyfulness in heaven over the salvation of my soul. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Bye for now. Hello everyone thank you for watching our video for today, I trust it blesses your heart. Endeavor to like this video and share it to your loved ones, I pray the grace of the living God will continue to rest upon you and upon everything that pertains to you in the name of Jesus, Amen. If you have any question or comments kindly drop them in the comment section, God bless you. See you in our next video and have a lovely day, bye for now.